Hi folks, I'm Tristan Louth Robbins, and welcome to the latest episode of the Flurio Sound Map video blog. This episode is a little bit different from the previous ones. As you can see, I'm, I'm not broadcasting from a particular location where I've made some recordings. Rather, I'm in my studio, and in the studio I've been compiling some archived recordings for inclusion on the Flurio Sound Map. In the recent past, I have included quite a few more archival recordings. I've, I've been trawling through hard drives and, and discovering some recordings that um, seem like a good fit for the sound map for a variety of reasons. However, this particular update is, uh, yeah, it's something a bit new in the sense that I'm including some hydrophone recordings which I've made over the years. I first started using hydrophones, which are underwater microphones, much like this. I started doing this around 2012, uh, about a year or so into starting the Flurio sound map. At the time, I was very much engaged with a large-scale art project called Southern Encounter, which was being facilitated by my friends over at the Wide Lab in New South Wales. And my work on this project involved putting together a series of compositions using field recordings from the sort of eastern Flurio region, so uh, including Victor Harbour, Port Elliot, Gulwa, and the Kurong region, the beginning of the Kurong region. And as work commenced on my part of the project and my composition, I, I felt as though I should really start exploring uh, the underwater environment in this region. In order to do that, I needed some underwater microphones. So, in 2012, I think it was maybe April or May, I started making my own hydrophones. You know, from a strictly DIY perspective, it's actually a lot easier to make something resembling or functioning like a hydrophone as opposed to a conventional microphone. To make a hydrophone, all you basically need is a piezoelectric transducer, a contact mic, in other words, uh, an enclosure for the contact mic to go in, you fix it inside there, obviously an audio cable, and then you need to make it as watertight as you possibly can. And that's the challenge. The first couple of hydrophones that I made, I constructed from various materials. I was Googling um, various sort of DIY projects. I think there might have been one on instructables.com. And I, I ended up with a couple of hydrophones which I settled on and, and I used for the first of my hydrophone recordings. Um, I dubbed these hydrophones uh, Nancy and Bob, respectively. And um, I'll just show some pictures of these and, and talk through these. So this first one, which you've already seen, is Nancy. It's constructed from a small pillbox with a contact mic fixed inside. You can see the cables protruding from there, and it's been sealed up with hot glue. This hydrophone was used mostly uh, when I was in Mai Lang, uh, which is on Lake Alexandrina. And I'm recording here on the shore, and I've immersed the hydrophone in the sandy substrate so as to capture the sound of the crashing tide, as well as uh, movement of sandy particles. Next, we've got the hydrophoam, which I call Bob. It's made from a bento box. It's got a contact mic sealed inside, also some plasticine inside it so as to weigh it down, and it's been sealed up with a mixture of hot glue and silicon. I used it mostly here at uh, Gulwa, specifically the Gulwa barrages, which is a structure which separates the freshwater 
section of the River Murray from the seawater section, which leads into the Coorong. Um, I visited this place quite a bit, and this particular recording is made on the barrages in one of the gates, so you can hear uh, the water coursing through. So the following year in 2013, I invested in, I suppose, proper hydrophones and hydrophones which weren't prone to leaking or shorting out. So I purchased a pair of these hydrophones. These are JRF uh, C-series hydrophones, I believe. And these are made by a artist and sound recorder based in England, Jazz Riley French. And these have been quite good over the years. Um, as you can see, they consist of, um, they would have a contact mic inside here, a piezoelectric transducer, um, stuck inside an enclosure. It does sort of look like a bottle cap here, and then they've been dipped into moulded plastic and sealed off. And then you plug them into your recorder, and they work, they work really quite well. So since 2013, that's what I've been using. And now I'm just going to play a couple of examples of recordings uh, made with these hydrophones. So this recording is made at Little Gorge. It's where the Gorge River comes out to meet the ocean. For this recording, I positioned a pair of hydrophones in a bed of seaweed uh, where the tide was beginning to come in. So at regular intervals, you can hear the water coursing through and saturating the seaweed. Uh, next, we're going to Karakalinga and the Karakalinga Creek estuary. And much like the recording in Little Gorge, uh, this is where a river or creek meets the ocean. For this recording, I positioned a pair of hydrophones on either side of the estuary in shallow substrates. And this captures the movement of the water on each side of the estuary as well as the movement of sandy particles uh, passing through and across the field of the hydrophones. Lastly, we're heading to Mulberry Farm and a dam which is located on this property, uh, private property in the district of Karakalinga. And in this recording, uh, which was made with a pair of hydrophones, you can hear the, this body of water teeming with life and activity. So whilst you were listening to those last few recordings, it would appear that several hours have elapsed and in that time I've been adding the finishing touches to the video which you're watching now. Time's got a funny way of working like that. If you'd like to listen to these recordings in their entirety and check out some of the other recordings, then head over to the Flurio Sound Map. Just Google Flurio Sound Map and you should be able to find your way there. Um, 
thanks for watching this video and, and thank you in advance for checking out the Flurio sound map. Thank you in general if you regularly visit the sound map. I really appreciate some of the feedback that I've been receiving lately. It, it means a great deal to me and it's, it's very motivating to keep, keep on with it and, and making these videos as well, which I hope folks are enjoying. So I'll see you around. Cheers.